Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Midnight Paint and Body Channel. Yeah, in this video, we are finally getting back to work on the 70 Charger RTSE. So, if you follow the channel, you will recognize this car. Um, this is kind of, I guess, the car I started my YouTube channel with. Um, which hasn't grown all that much, but it's, uh, it does okay. Um, so, if you're not familiar, this is a 1970 Charger RTSE. Uh, it's been a major project. It's been here for quite some time now. And that, uh, yeah, just these big jobs are hard to make time to work on. But I need to get back to work on this thing. So, right here is where I had this car torn down to. So you can see it was a pretty major project. So it was pretty much new everything. So I got it to the stage where the inners are all painted. The undercarriage is all painted. Body work is done. So at this point, the car is ready to prep for paint. But what we're going to be doing first is installing some of these four link suspension components for the rear. I have not even taken them out of the boxes. Customer dropped them off a while back. I haven't even looked at them. So we're going to get to that. Um, if you follow it along, you may have seen the progress on this one. This car is in fact ready to go home. The customer might be, might be going home today. This is as far as I'm taking it for now. Um, but I did just do a full TCI four link rear suspension in this one. So that turned out super awesome. My disclaimer, I'm not a car builder. I'm not a hot rod builder. Uh, I am a body man painter, but that kind of stuff is actually, this was a, an amazing bolt in kit. So that's no problem at all, and I'm sure this will be the same. So it's kind of cool that that was a TCI kit, which the quality was beautiful. In this case, everything that's going in it is QA1, which I have no doubt in my mind that the quality will be exceptional as well. I hear nothing but good things all the time about QA1 suspension. So, that being said, now that you are all up to speed, let's pull these boxes out of here and see what we are working with. Okay, so let's see what we have in these boxes. This truly is the first time I've even taken these parts out. So. Alrighty, oh, I've got some pretty heavy duty, I guess, four link mounts. We've got some instructions. Oh, okay, these are from USCT. Other pieces in there. That is some heavy duty stuff. There's some little knockouts that came out of somewhere. Okay, some other probably four link bar mounts or something. QA1 box. We have packaging. All right, and a rear, I guess, shock mount for link bar mount. So that looks to be pretty straightforward to me. 
All right, so I am going to move some stuff around because I'll kick my car outside, move this car around. We'll have a look at the instructions and see where all this stuff goes. Okay, so I just read through the instructions for this stuff. Um, so I was referring to these as four link mounts, but they're basically just a leaf spring relocation kit. Um, instructions are super vague on those. They basically just say put them in place and weld them in. I don't even know where in place is yet. Haven't looked under the car yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this cross member four link shock mount is super straightforward. It's basically, basically gonna go between the frame rails and just be plug welded in all those holes. So I'll probably uh, get under there. I'll probably fit this guy first and then we'll have a look at the, these pieces. If you're not familiar with this car, this is all new. Um, the frame rails are new. The trunk floor is new. Dropouts, everything. Um, floor. Frame connectors. So it's all done under here. Uh, we put in the uh, wide wheel tubs in this one. So, we're gonna have to get this thing up on some stands, get this little rolly stand out of here for that piece. And then, let me just swing around here. I'm guessing. Definitely gonna have to research this one a little more because I quite honestly don't even know where these go. This is the right side. These are to move the springs inboard. So there's the original spring hanger there, and that these were these were new as well. These uh, spring spring hanger mounting points, whatever you want to call them. So I guess, or maybe this must be the back, I guess, because we're moving everything inboard. Okay, I bet you these are going here. I'll have to drill for those and weld those in. So that's gonna move the spring into there. And then I'm guessing, Man, I don't know. I definitely have to research these because the instructions are super vague. So, there's a look under the car anyway. Yeah, it pains me to cut into this thing with all the damn work I did on this car, but it is what it is. I'm gonna research this stuff a little back, a little bit. We'll come back in a few minutes and I'll show you guys what we have discovered. So oh, here's a little check-in for you guys. So I've got that QA1 cross member just roughed in place. Uh, pretty snug fit in between the frame rails, but these are reproduction frame rails that I put in this car. So the whole back end of this car is new. So could just be the way they're stamped. It could be that I welded them in, you know, an eighth of an inch in, but that's uh, either way, that's not a big deal. So that's just kind of sitting in place for now. And then these leaf spring relocation brackets. So these are going to move the leaf springs from here into here um, to make room for wider tires. Now this took me a little digging to actually find, I mean, I didn't know how these go in and the instructions from USCT, they kind of sucked to be honest. Um, so I had to dig around on their website and finally I Googled the part number and I found pictures. So I assumed these like slipped over the frame rail, but uh, no. So I need to cut these frame rails. So I've made a 
cardboard template just off of the side of this piece. And then we're going to use that template to cut out the frame rail. And then these guys will be going right up in there, kind of like that, only over more. So I'm going to do a little more checking and measure three more times before I actually cut. But that's pretty straightforward. They will go up into place and then be welded around all the way around the top. Uh, so yeah, so now obviously where I've got the car supported here is good and solid. But I'm going to be cutting these frame rails, which with all this weight hanging over the back, that could certainly droop the back of the car once I cut those frame rails out. Um, it's probably enough structure in the thing that it wouldn't, but you can't trust probably. So I am going to be bracing up the rear of the car. I will level it and square it and all of that stuff before doing any cutting. And then I'll be able to check it throughout the cuts and prior to welding in new pieces. So that's where we're at. So when you see this next, I'll probably be chopping these suckers out. So here's a little check-in guys, my afternoon kind of got away from me, but I've managed to get all uh, under the car here with me, managed to get the leaf spring relocation brackets in place. So as you can see, I had to cut out the brand new frame, but this is actually it's not as intrusive as I kind of thought it was going to be, so this isn't going to be bad at all. So we've got these guys in place. They bolt to the original leaf spring hanger location. And then I've of course had to cut out the frame, so these are going to be welded solid. Let's see, up in there, all up and around. Around here, around there, so they will be super duper solid. They'll be part of the frame when I'm done with that. And then the rears, I didn't get to cutting, but you can see I've kind of marked them here. So here's the original leaf spring hanger location. So now I will be putting these brackets right there. They'll be welded solid all around the perimeter. I'm going to be cutting out in there. And then these have that uh, metal slug that goes through the center and that'll be welded around around there once it's in place. So that's going to bring the leaf springs in quite a bit. So it's going to make a bunch more room for big tires. So so just to check in, but it is the end of the day on Friday and I am done for the day, but I will bring you guys back. Well, I guess we'll be back at this tomorrow. So we'll see how much we get done. Well, good morning, everyone. Back under the charger this morning actually Saturday today and it is Canada Day so happy Canada Day everyone well I guess it won't be Canada Day when you're watching this but happy Canada Day for today which is probably not today for you because it'll be in the future anyway so back on the charger I have gone ahead and taken this side the spring relocation bracket I've had it back off I've just kind of cleaned up around the edges to give uh, area to weld to. I have sprayed all the backside everywhere that's not going to be accessible with the weld through primer. So it's all sealed up. I was going to prime these before weld them in, but I mean, I'm gonna have to be um, feathering everything back once it's welded in anyway. So I figured I'd just go ahead and weld it. So as you can see, these bolt up to the original spring hanger location. And then, of course, our 
spring hanger is moved inboard. Um, so what I have done with this bracket, so I've got it in place with the bolts. And then what I always like to do, so I've measured from several different points. Typically I'll go to frame holes. So I've just been kind of measuring, you know, from the back of the bracket to the holes, from those holes to these holes, so just a bunch of different spots. And then I will make sure that one has the same measurements. And then when I weld the back pieces in, we'll do a bunch of cross measurements and make sure everything is where it needs to be. And the back of the car is squared up. You can see I've got the jacks in there. It, it won't really make a difference with what I'm doing here, but it's always good to have things where they need to be, where they're going to live before you weld anything. So I'm going to set up the welder and start burning this side in. So I've got this first side welded in. So before you go picking apart my welding, it's, a, it's actually it's a really tough area to get into with the torch. So um, my welds may not be the prettiest, but they are definitely solid. There is uh, yeah, plenty of penetration, as you can probably see in there. So. It's definitely in place, probably what I will do with something like this. Once I have it in primer, I'll probably give, uh, maybe just mask it and give a smear of seam sealer over the welds, just to smooth it out, make it look a little nicer. I mean, not that this is a highly visible area, but it still needs to look nice. So, so I'm gonna continue on, probably weld up the other side. And then we will go from there. Yeah, I think I might actually open the doors for a little bit. You know, this is ridiculous. This is welcome to a long weekend in Canada. I'm gonna see if I can add a little video here. This was literally like 10 minutes ago. And now it's kind of beautiful out again. Well, I'll let some fresh air in the shop and get back to work. All right, so let's get back under the charger. So I've got the two front leaf spring relocation brackets welded in. Uh, cleaned up a little bit. So those are in place. Everything measures up good. So I'm going to move on to getting the rear of the frame rail ready for these guys, which I think I showed you before. So pretty straightforward. Those are gonna just be welding right over top of the frame there. And I just need to make a hole to feed these slugs through once those brackets are in place. So I'm gonna start cutting some holes. Okay, so this part is pretty straightforward here, guys. Um, so I have obviously put a hole through the frame rail just with a hole saw. Uh, the only one decent hole saw I have is a lot bigger, as, as you can see, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to be putting this sleeve in place and once that's welded in, we will be welding the sleeve all the way around. So, I'm just going to be cleaning up around there. We'll remeasure one more time and then I can move on to welding this bracket into place.
And there is our rear shackle relocation bracket welded in place. So, as you can see, that one I mean, is pretty straightforward. Not much to it. So, I've just got the one left. But it's, you know, it's almost the end of the day. It's Saturday, it's long weekend, so I think I'm gonna knock off just a little bit early here and get some other things done around the house. But when I come back, we'll get back to that and get some paint on all these pieces. Oh, and I gotta weld that four link cross bracket in as well. So we'll get to that later too. Well, it's the next day. The uh, frame reels are repainted under the charger. So I'm gonna unmask this thing and then we'll come in and have another looky at how everything turned out. Okay, so she is unmasked, so let's just have a little looky here at what we've accomplished this time. So, of course, the uh, leaf spring relocation brackets are all actually welded to the frame where the leaf springs used to mount outside here. So it's going to give us a bunch more tire room now. So rear back, rear brackets in place there. And then climb underneath. We can kind of have a look at the frame rail there, where it goes down to the bracket. And then there's a... Oh, oh I'm losing my light. I'm going to unplug it like Eric Clapton. And there's that uh, QA1, I guess, four link bar shock mount. I guess it's, I guess is what it is. So... That was powder coated black. Uh, it's got a little bit of primer overspray on it. I'll clean that off, but I chose to leave that black. Sometimes I think it's nice just to have little bits of contrast under these cars, because this, this is going to have, uh, I believe a lot of the suspension components are gonna be painted body color on this one. So it's nice to leave a few black accents. I think it makes them look a little better. And then of course there's our other frame rail. So that's one more step completed in the process of bringing this 1970 Charger RTSE back from the dead. So hopefully somebody finds that helpful. Um, like I always say in these videos too, guys, I, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm a body man. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of this kind of stuff lately. I learn as I go along just like everyone else. Um, but yeah. So I think the next step on this car I've got a little bit of time, so I might actually start on the prep work on it. Um, it's only the end of July right now, but I have been so busy that I've actually left a big block of time in October completely open to work on only this car. Now, if you're not familiar, I mean, this is my business, uh, Midnight Paint and Body is my little body shop. It's, uh, it's not an easy way to make a living, so that's why these big jobs tend to drag out. It is quite honestly the weekly work that I bring in that pay the bills and uh, you know keep a little money in the bank account. So I just try and work on these big ones in between. So um, if it seems like it takes an awful long time to get them done, that's because often it does. End of the day, I'm only one guy, but uh, as always, thank you so much for checking out the video. And I do hope you come back and check out the next one.